achievements I've had so far in my life, I always give it back to the my roots, which is which is what I consider my school to be. The major shocker for me when I joined the school was that the kids didn't believe in themselves in terms of being ambitious. Uh, for them, settling was something that they were very comfortable with, whether it was in sports. Even within academics, they were very happy with the way they were, as long as, for instance, they were passing. So these were stark differences that I saw in my peers and in these students. Coincidentally, I was in the same college as she was, uh, in a different stream. And I think through my political science education, I was able to understand how power functions in any given setting. So it's an all-male staff that we have at our school, right? So a couple of times we were actually thrown out of the staff room. There was a harassment incident before that with a volunteer. And what they ended up saying was, you know what, she used to frequent the staff room as well and these female fellows frequent the staff room. So that's the problem. So you throw the women out and then there's no problem at all. I face harassment outside the school. I face harassment at the workplace. And it was too much to take. And then of course I was also teaching um, the 8th graders at that point of time. And something that kept happening was them just saying, oh you know what, we don't want a Didi, we want a Bhaiya. Just throw her out. I was standing in the quadrangle of my school and uh, suddenly something hit me. And it was one of those alu bum that they make, one of these homemade things I guess. And it hit me right here. So I figured where it had been, uh, what it had been aimed at. And that left me with this deep sense of helplessness. The idea that one day I could have students who would be sensitive about this, who would be asking questions and who would not only ask questions but stop their friends from doing things of this sort. That big picture kept me going. I think the biggest tool has actually been just showing up every day. Um, for them to see what consistency looks like and that gender is not something that is given to you um, the moment you're, like, you're born, it's, it's taught to you over time um, and there are ways to unlearn that as well. The direct opposite is what happened to me in ninth grade because I didn't get hate, I got too much love. They're teenagers, so that amount of attention that they needed to be given, I couldn't exactly reciprocate that, it wasn't appropriate. And to make a 16 year old understand that was quite a battle. The lingo that is generally used around us is my kids, my children, I took my kids here, I did this with my children. And I suddenly realized, yeah, that they're not my kids, they're my students and I wanted to keep that distance between us. A lot of times these boys are extremely street smart, right? They're 15, 16 year old boys, they um, handle their family businesses at home, um, they take care of their families when they're at home, they're responsible for getting the water every morning or making sure the electricity is on. But over here, um, in a more student manner, they didn't have that amount of exposure. So to push them into going for competitions, um, like Mathathon and MUN uh, was really important because they came back very inspired. I showed them full confidence. I know you can travel 17 metro stations on your own. I know you can take the rickshaw on your own. I know you can figure out the bus route on your own. And I know you'll keep me informed in the process. So they have always seen themselves as adults being from the families that they come from and they like to be treated as adults as well. Pedagogically, we had certain uh, tools that we could use but in terms of behavior management um, we were taught energizers and uh, if you've looked at our school energizers are not a very viable option for 10th grade english something that i focused on was building different skills within the language itself so um, mondays for instance would be reserved entirely for reading comprehension tuesdays and wednesdays would be for literature Thursday would be for the novel, the prescribed novel that they're supposed to study. Friday exclusively for grammar again. And Saturday would be an open space where whatever theme we've picked up throughout the week, we would be doing something interactive with it on Saturday. What they would tell me and what I found in the class was that they were good at reading their text. The question that they asked me when, they, when I entered was, uh, but why do we need an English teacher? I mean, um, what do you do in English? You just read in English, right? And somehow that made me realize that as a reader, that was never how I approached the language itself. For me, it was a way of looking at other people's stories and finding myself in them. Pushing them to look at the text, not just as black and white 
lines and everything that's going around but looking at it as something that is alive something that has meaning and something that exists to give you some meaning about your own self that was really deep please continue 6th, 7th, 8th, they had really, really creative classes where maybe the content wasn't delivered fully within those 45 minutes but the kids had a lot of joy and fun in class and they remember them very well. There was a lot of resistance that, okay, Didi is not being creative enough, she's just like any other government teacher. Where did her TFI ideals go? This is where I ended up just blurting out one day that why don't you take my class tomorrow. The next day, the student actually ended up taking the class and he came and told me that I understand how hard it is. I mean, they gained some sense of empathy with the teachers. They also gained a love for the textbook, I would say, because a lot of students came back and said, wow, there is so much in the NCRT itself. It is true that uh, because we're teaching the 10th grade right now, there's also a lot of pressure to get them to perform within the system itself. But I think what we're trying to do is strike a balance between the two. Right, like if you do want to make a change in the education system, you need to not just be a student to know it from this side of the table, you also need to have the kind of skills and expertise to know it from the other side of the table as well. For example, they kept idol, idols like Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg as that they have dropped out of college. But we had to fill in the gap that they went to Harvard and dropped out of college. Your favorite rapper, Bacha, went to Stephen's and dropped out of college, right? What are students doing at home? was the question I wanted to figure out. And our WhatsApp group of 10th A was is, is an extremely interactive space where kids ask each other questions and very random questions that when light passes through water, like the refraction thing, the, some kid will ask, why does this happen? Over there, I ended up posting um, random aptitude tests and I honestly didn't know what the reaction of the students or the response rate of the students will be. But it was very heartening to see that all the students, like most of the students ended up doing taking that aptitude test, posting their results, saying that yeah I agree when you say this is your area of development. So even identifying their friends strengths and weaknesses was interesting to see. The students themselves showed a lot of initiative. I would get early morning um, emails from them of pictures of nature that they have taken or pictures that they have edited and then it translated into them creating a YouTube channel, writing a blog during summers. So um, technology was an aspect we have really figured out that we can do this with grade 10 students. So career planning has been a very important aspect for us and what is really good about it is that it has been an important aspect ever since they were in the 6th grade. In fact yesterday when I was ha having a conversation with Dipanju he mentioned that wow it, all the students wanted to take up science when they were in 6th and 7th inspired by their bhaiyas. Next again came an engineer but this time there was a lawyer as well. And economics I can personally speak for, nobody in class was interested in. Till I took up the subject. One um, major thing that I leveraged was already their curiosity level. To teach 10th graders the concept of purchasing power parity was very difficult at that point because these were big words, big concepts, you needed some sort of like mathematical understanding of the concept as well. Um, I taught them by telling them, go find out what the Big Mac index is. And they found that really interesting that, oh, there can be ways of evaluating countries which can be made easy for kids as well. And I think even my understanding of the subject had to expand a lot because having done an undergraduation in it, sometimes it was very difficult for me to break down a concept to them. My personal passion uh, to understand power has led me to conduct my classes the way that I do and the students have reacted and responded really well to it. So when we study democracy, for instance, democracy versus dictatorship, there is a part where they are supposed to, they, they do this sort of uh, compare and contrast between the two and a lot of them had this idea that, oh, you know what, dictatorships are better because they lead to better outcomes. Mm. We studied the NCRT, found out that was not true. Connect this to a chapter in English, which was uh, from the diary of a young girl. When I asked them, how does this make you feel? One of the students got up and he said, I feel sad because she was our age. And suddenly dictatorship was not better for them at that moment. And I think just, I believe in the power of people's stories. I think I agree with you on the fact that teaching is in itself a political act. And quite often it becomes, I think it's very easy to transfer what you believe in to the students. So even within literature, when I'm introducing them to say the poetry of freedom, I'm not introducing them uh, to them poetry by certain groups of people. 
I am a more firm believer of capitalism, but a lot of the students in class did believe heavily in socialism. Just strategically making it a classroom discussion where they discuss amongst themselves and they learn from each other rather than me instituting my beliefs into them. Um, completely eliminated me from the situation while still being there around to give the correct inputs and the data and evidence and everything. Sanjana is the kind of person who will express her affection through very non-verbal means. So she'll get cupcakes for the students. Okay, she'll make these little tiny cards for the students. She'll stay up the whole night doing it. Um, but she will not accept that, you know, she really, really cares about the boys. I think I've seen Sanjana also move from the person who would do these things uh, to also now articulating how she feels about them. And I think the boys have just picked on that really beautifully and that is the transition I've seen in them as well. Co-fellow support has been a very important has played a very important role in my two years. Roy was extremely supportive in terms of letting me experiment as much as I want. He knew my areas of development really well. Um, and he pushed me and challenged me a lot to do things which he knew were out of my comfort zone. As tough as was it for the kids, for Roy to move out, so was it for me. But that's where Ishani really stepped up and filled that gap in for me as well. Similar work ethics, similar attitude towards like professionalism and things like that. Um, very important, played a really important role in our bonding for sure. Something that I've always found in Sanjana is this person who who just constantly pushes you to be better and better at what you do without making you feel like you're bad at what you do. When somebody else trusts you so much, it builds that confidence in yourself as well to be able to handle all of these situations. What's worked has been very simple for me, has been a very strong feedback mechanism system. Not just in terms of how my lesson plans are going, but in terms of how I am as a person. What has not worked so well has um, probably been a little bit more support from um, the organization in terms of making the school environment uh, a little bit more conducive um, to our teaching and the students learning. What I want to do is work in the education system and understand how say a single sex classroom for instance builds up that concept of masculinity and I want to contribute to academia that way. A lot of rich experiences I'll have, uh, I'll have to write about. I, I feel like I have gained a lot of soft skills in the kind of experience I've ha experiences I've had in terms of working on a team, managing a class full of students or just working with so many deadlines and coordinating with so many stakeholders. As a, for my own professional growth, I do want to gain some sort of technical skills as well. So I would be moving into a more formal environment. Big corporates come up with these crazy schemes and campaigns which don't necessarily translate into outcomes because they're not grounded in reality. They need people who have already worked at the grassroots to be able to tell them from their own personal experience and understanding of the field whether this campaign with so much funds and money and effort is going to work out or not. There's a lot of nostalgia in the classroom right now of course because these are the last few days that they're going to be together um, and I look at these groups of boys who are just standing there and they're discussing this movie that they've watched recently or have they done their math homework or not or <laughs> well that is a re recurring theme they're really scared of you it seems. Um, it's just so much of happiness right there. In one of those moments when I'm outside the class and I'm looking at them like an outsider would look at it. And it's this moment of immense gratitude that I could be a part of their journey. Dear future employers, um, I would describe this class and the, all the students that constitute this class to showcase the value of grit to their best of abilities. Dear future employer, please prepare yourself for a lot of questions. You will have a fun time with them if you let them be. Always push the kids to find a purpose in the work they do because they are going to push you to find a purpose in the work that you do. These are not just your employees. These are not machines. They're people. Um, if you sit down with them one day, you'll have wonderful stories to hear. You'll have stories that inspire, stories that break your heart, stories that will motivate you, stories that will take you places. But most of all, you will have found friends who will believe in you. You will have found people who believe in the work that you do. You will have people who stand with firm conviction and people who believe that they can change the world.